ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله is a great blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to gather in a gathering like this. It is a great blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to remember him in a blessing, in a blessed gathering like this. Because when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers us in a better gathering. It is a gathering where the angels surround this gathering and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. And when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers us. And it helps with our purpose in life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mankind and jinn only to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the sweetness of this worship we can taste in Ramadan. So before Ramadan, we look at the days, it seems very long, 18 hours, 19 hours. It is the summertime. You think, how am I gonna cope? How am I gonna work? How, what am I gonna eat? How am I gonna wake up in the mornings? It seems difficult. But now, 27 days of Ramadan have nearly passed. How quick has the time gone? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for us to fast. And this time is the time for us to train our worship so that we can deal with the 11 months that is to follow afterwards. So just like take the example of firemen. They have training in a controlled environment to develop the skills they need to be effective when they're dealing with the real fire. So in Ramadan time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the rewards doubled, tripled, and multiplied when we do them in Ramadan time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes away the shaitans so that the whispers are less. There was a couple of brothers, they were having a conversation, and one brother says to him that in Ramadan time, the shaitans are locked up. So the other brother, he thinks about it, and he says, you know what, you're right because I have less arguments with my wife. So SubhanAllah, this funny conversation, but actually it's, it's a very good, good opportunity for us to develop the skills that we need to help us in the following 11 months. So this talk today is all about making the days count. Not just in Ramadan, but also outside of Ramadan. Because in Ramadan time, we watch our behavior. We look at the things that we are doing. We try to improve ourselves. We try to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the difficult thing is to remain steadfast after Ramadan. That is the key thing. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same Lord in Ramadan as outside of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the same blessings in Ramadan as outside of Ramadan. So why should we change our ibadah? Now after Ramadan, we will obviously dip a little bit. We will come down a little bit. But we have to look, how were we before Ramadan? And how were we after Ramadan? If we see an improvement, say Alhamdulillah, because that is a sign that your Ramadan has been accepted. Now if you've improved by a certain level, after Ramadan, try not to go back to the level that you were before Ramadan. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make the dua, Ya Mukallib Al-Kulub, Thabbit Qalbi Ala Deenik. Ya Mukallib Al-Kulub, O Controller of the Hearts. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is making dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. O Controller of the Hearts, make firm, Thabbit Qalbi Ala Deenik, make firm my heart in your religion. This is the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is what we should do because it is always about the ending. It is never about the beginning. 
So the beginning of Ramadan, we practice in the first 10, 20 days, and the last 10 nights, we excel, we strive harder. Why? Because of Laylatul Qadr. Because we want to achieve the reward of Laylatul Qadr. And the Prophet Sallallahu would tighten his belt and work harder all the way till the end of Ramadan. Just because there is the 27th of Ramadan, it does not mean Ramadan is over. Think of it as though when you have antibiotics. You have antibiotics and they prescribe them for you to have them for two weeks. After a week, you're feeling better. But they say, don't stop taking the antibiotics. Keep taking them. Likewise, Ramadan has not finished. We have to strive hard in these remaining nights. And we have to finish off Ramadan on a peak. And how do we do that? We continue to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Aisha anha, asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi that if I see Laylatul Qadr, what should I do? What dua should I make? And this is a dua we should all have memorized. And they said to say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Yes? That, oh Allah, you are the one who is the partner. You are al-afu. And you love to forgive. Tuhibbul afwa. You love to forgive. So forgive me. This is how the Prophet ﷺ wanted us to spend the peak of Ramadan, the best time of Ramadan, the last 10 nights of Ramadan, the night of power, the Laylatul Qadr, the night of destiny. This is how we should have and greet the end of Ramadan by seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate success. If we have the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what else is there that is greater than that? And we can see that when we pray. When we pray, and after we finish the prayer, the first thing we say is, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, three times. We seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we approach the end of Ramadan and these very precious nights, we should make it a habit to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now after Ramadan, this is also one of those things that we can continuously do. So, an example of a person who came to Hassan al-Basri, rahimullah, and they asked them a question. And they said, we are having a drought and we don't have rain. What should we do? And they said, seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another person came and he said, that my wife is barren, we don't have children. What should we do? And he said, Seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another person came and they said that we are poor, we don't have wealth, what should we do? What was the answer? Seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when these people left, his students asked, why did you give the same answer for three different questions? And they said, have you not seen the ayat in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Ask forgiveness from a Lord who is forgiving, and he will increase you in all of these things. He will increase you in wealth. He will increase you in children, and he will make you prosper. How? By seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, there was a person, he came, and he came to the Prophet sallallahu and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I have been destroyed. How has he been destroyed? He said that he went with his wife and had sexual relations during the day of fasting, which is a major sin. So the Prophet ﷺ told him, can you free a slave? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I cannot free a slave. So he said, okay, can you fast for 60 days consecutively? He said, Ya Rasulullah, this is very difficult. I cannot fast for 60 days consecutively because that means if you fasted for 40 days and you missed one, you have to start from the beginning. If you fasted 50 days and you missed one, you have to go back to the beginning. 60 days consecutively to make up for this mistake that he did. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I cannot do this. So they asked him, can you feed 60 people? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I cannot do this. So they said, sit. And as the Prophet ﷺ was thinking, a person came and he donated a tray of dates to give out in charity. So the Prophet ﷺ, where is the questioner who asked this question? Bring him here. And they said, take these dates and give them 
to the poorest family that you know. So he looks at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, says, Ya Rasulullah, I do not know of anyone more poorer than me. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiled and said, take these dates and feed yourself and feed your family. So why did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smile? They smiled that through this person committing the sin, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala gave him his risk, gave him his provision. Why? Because he, he thought the forgiveness of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. He was true with his covenant to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. He was true with his promise to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. He was afraid that he made a mistake and he wanted to repent. And he turned to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala knowing that he had made a big mistake. But look at the outcome. Through his honesty and turning for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him his daily bread, gave him his risk, even though he had committed a sin. So the forgiveness is something that we should practice on a daily basis. Because the Prophet sallallahu used to ask for forgiveness how many times in a day? How many times? 70 times, 100 times, a number of times they used to ask for forgiveness. So imagine you sat in a gathering and the Prophet ﷺ is sat there, the companions are sat there, and every so often, Astaghfirullah, 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 I seek forgiveness from Allah, Astaghfirullah, Watsubay. The greatest person like the Prophet ﷺ is seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should make this a daily habit. So this is the first point. I only have five points. This is the first one. So let's see who can remember all of these points. This will help to make the days count in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. The main thing is we want to be steadfast all the way until the Yaqeen comes. What is the Yaqeen? It is the death. We want to be steadfast all the way up until death. We want to be true to the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to be in a state of ibadah all of our life, all the way to the end. Five very easy, simple things. The first one is to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make it a regular habit. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi. Make it a regular habit to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the first thing. The second thing is to be charitable to be of those people who are of the upper hand, who give in charity. The Prophet Sallallahu was very generous, but they were more generous in Ramadan time. So the Prophet Sallallahu were more generous in Ramadan time, why? Because when you give in charity, it extinguishes the wrath of Allah as though fire extinguishes, oh, as water extinguishes fire. So they would be more generous. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, spend of that which we have given you. Spend of that which we have given you before a time comes, before death comes, and you will say, Rabbi, lawla, akhartani, O oh Allah, give me some more time. So imagine it is the time of death. And you have to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, give me a little bit more time. What would you ask for? What would you do? Would you go and do hajj? Would you go and solve some world poverty or world hunger? Would you do something big? No. He would say, Oh Allah, give me some more time so that I may give sadaqah. So that I may give charity. Perhaps I may be of the righteous. So whatever you do in Ramadan time, follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ. Give something in charity. Make it a daily habit. If you have children, have a box at home that you call a charity box. And every Friday or every day, put some money in there. Teach your kids, take this money, put it into the masjid. Get them into the habit of giving. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, spend of that which I have given you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given us something. So we don't have to wait until we become rich or wait until we have money to give. Every single person has something to give. And the Prophet sallallahu was the most generous. So this is the second point. It is very, very simple. 
have something where you give something on a daily basis because whenever you donate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will only increase you in wealth and some of the companions when they would donate they would put some perfume on it because who are you donating to who are you giving the sadaqah to it doesn't matter which project it is or what what you are giving the sadaqah for it is who you are giving it to it is all about the quality of our actions. They wanted to make their action as the best quality as they possibly could. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, that Allah created death and Allah created life. For what purpose? To test you to see who is the best in deeds. Think about that. That is the purpose. Allah created us to see who is the best indeed. So it's always about the quality of our actions. Whenever you do something, make sure it is of the highest quality. If you can have quantity, that is good. But if you have to choose between quality and quantity, choose the quality of the action. So what was the first point? The first point is seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second point is giving regular charity because Allah will only increase you in that wealth. You will never ever lose out when you give. A life worth living is a life worth giving. The best amongst you is the one who is the best in mankind, who is the most helpful, who is the most beneficial. So that's the second point. The third point is all about the prayer. Because in Ramadan time, we increase in the prayer. We increase in the Tarawih prayer. We increase in the number of Sunnah prayers that we have. And truly, this is the key to success, is to focus on the prayer. Why did the Prophet Sallallahu always ask Bilal to call the Adhan so he could have the sweetness of the prayer? When he had a difficulty, he turned to the prayer. Before he was dying on his deathbed, when somebody is dying on the deathbed and the family is around, the thing that they say is going to be the thing that is the most remembered. The thing they say is going to be the thing that is the most valuable. What did the Prophet ﷺ say on the deathbed? The salah, the salah, the salah, the prayer, the prayer, the prayer. The prayer is the only thing that will really intercede for us on the day of judgment. The prayer is the main thing that connects us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The prayer is the main thing that destroyed what Iblis had. The first thing that he will distract us with is the prayer. He will distract you with the prayer. You committed a sin. How can you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You need to just not pray now. Are you a hypocrite? He will put these doubts into your head. But never despair of the mercy of Allah. Whatever happens, whatever mistakes we make, whatever sins we commit, always turn to the prayer. The Prophet always turned to the prayer. Why did they have the sweetness of the prayer? Because you're talking to the one who loves you the most. The prayer, when you converse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a joyful moment. Why? Because you are talking to the one who loves you the most. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you the most. And you feel that sweetness in the prayer. So look at what the quality of our prayer is like. Search ways on how you can achieve the khushu in the prayer. Look for exciting destinations in the prayer. Let me give you one example. One time, the Prophet ﷺ was praying, and from Ruku they came up and they said, Sami Allahu liman hamida. That Allah listens to the one who praises him. And what do we normally say as a response? Rabbana wa lakal hamd. All the praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the companions he added, he added a few words. Let's see who knows what those words were. He said, Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. So after the prayer had finished, or oh, these few words, hamdan kathiran, that this praise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is, it is something that is huge, hamdan kathiran. And he said that this praise is tayyib, this praise is pure, excellent, of the highest quality. And this praise is mubarak, it is a blessed praise. So these five words he added, hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. 
And after the prayer, the Prophet Sallallahu asked, who added these words? So nobody spoke because they were afraid they may have said something wrong. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam added, it is something good. So one of the companions said, Ya Rasulullah, it was me. I added this, added these words. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? They said, I saw about 30 or so angels race to collect the reward for what you have said. Such a small, simple thing to add, but it's very valuable because either we do not know this dua or we know this dua, but we forgot the meaning. Or we don't appreciate the value of the reward of this, when in the hereafter, we will wish we could have one extra reward, one good deed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us many good deeds. You give the salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the reward of 10 hasanat. You read the Quran, one letter is worth 10 hasanat. There's so many opportunities to do goodness now. This is the time to take the reminder. This is the time to feel the bitterness of the reminder, to act upon it, because in the hereafter, we will not be able to take any benefit from it. The, the prayer is a crucial aspect of our life. And I firmly believe that if you couple it with having good friends, that will give you success in this life. The salah, and having good friends who remind you of our purpose, who remind you of the hereafter, will bring you success. It is very important to look at who you associate with, who you hang out with, who is your friends. Are they encouraging you towards goodness? Are they encouraging you towards bad? Look at your friends, because on the he in the hereafter, you will be grouped with your friends. So if you are used to going out and looking at the girls and clubbing, you will be in that group, but you will not be going out to those clubs. You will be led towards the hellfire. If you were in the group that we used to go drinking, you will be raised in your companions who used to drink, and you will definitely not be going out for a drink in the hereafter. You have to look at your friends. If they encourage you, encourage you to do goodness, if they encourage you to come and pray, it is the time for prayer, let's pray. If their daily routine was evolved around prayer, when you had difficulty, they reminded you it is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They gave you good nasiha, they gave you good advice, they stood by you. Why? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the group that you will be with in the hereafter. The one you love the most, the one you associate with the most, that is the one who you will be raised with. This is why when the Prophet asked one of the companions, he asked, he said, Ya Rasulullah, the Prophet asked him, is there anything I can give you? What would you ask for? If the Prophet asked you, is there anything you would like? Ask me anything, what would you ask? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to be with you in Jannah. Because they love the Prophet They love the Prophet so much that the biggest calamity for them was to be separated from the Prophet The biggest calamity was when we die, where will we be? The prophets will be in Jannah, in the highest level. But where will we be? They were afraid. They were worried. His question was, Ya Rasulullah, how do I be with you in Jannah al firdaus And they said, help me to help you by increasing in your prostration. Help me to help you by increasing in your prostration. Meaning, increase in your salah. So before Ramadan, if you didn't pray regularly, pray regularly now. In Ramadan time, if you didn't attend the masjid, attend the masjid, because the reward for attending the masjid is greater. When you walk to the masjid, the sins are forgiven and your ranks in Jannah is raised. Pray the Fajr with the Jama'ah, pray the Isha with the Jama'ah, why? Because the Prophet told us, the one who prays Isha with Jama'ah, it is as though he will get half the night in Ibadah as reward. And when you pray the Fajr with the Jama'ah, it is the remaining half of the night. Just two prayers in the masjid, and you could get the reward as though you prayed all night long. You could pray Isha with the Jama'ah, go home and sleep, and rest and relax. Pray Fajr, and you will get the reward as though you prayed all night. Choose something, something that you didn't do before Ramadan, 
that you're going to change about your prayer this Ramadan time. The Prophet Sam told us the one who prays the 12 sunnahs in the day will get a palace in Jannah. Anybody know what the 12 sunnahs are? The two before Fajr, the four before Dhuhr, the two after Dhuhr. How many is that? Six, eight, eight. Yeah? Which are the ones? Two after Maghrib, that's 10. And the last ones? Isha, two after Isha, yeah? That's 12. So we've been used to praying. So set yourself a target. Perhaps it's going to be these extra sunnahs you're going to pray. Because it's going to be valuable for you. The Prophet Sadam promises you all these things. It doesn't take long to pray. The prayer was 50. Initially, it was 50. Imagine if you had to pray 50 times in the day. When would you have a break? Oh, I've just prayed, you leave, time for prayer again. Back to the masjid. Or back to the masallah. Time for prayer. 50 prayers in a day. How could we do that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us so much. When you pray one prayer, is the equivalent to 10. You pray the five, equivalent to 50. How merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the first one was seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at what you did and see how you can benefit after Ramadan. The second one is the charity. Make sure you have something that you give on a regular basis. The third one is the salah. The fourth one is about the Quran. Take time every day to spend some time with the Quran. Because your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all depends on your relationship with the Quran. 10 minutes a day, it doesn't take long. 10 minutes a day, just open the book of Allah. Set a specific time in the day. If you don't set a specific time, the shaitan will whisper to you and say, oh, read it later. You have to go and do this. Oh, read it uh, after work. You know, you have to do this. After work comes, oh, you're too tired now, go to sleep. Set a specific time in the day that you will spend 10 minutes to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you can't do that, whenever you leave in the morning or you leave for work, have the Quran there, just open it up, read a sentence, take a sentence from it. Just think about that sentence. Make the Quran a part of our life that we don't let a single day pass except that our eyes see the ayat of the Quran. The last point is all about dhikr. Our life is very short. On average, the lifespan, let's say, is about 60 years, if you're lucky. 60 years is all we have to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we deserve Jannah. 60 years is all we have also to show what we are made of in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make it a regular habit to make dhikr. So, for example, the Prophet said, two words, they are light on the tongue, but they are heavy on the scales. Which two words? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al azim. Two words, very light on the tongue, very light on the tongue, but they'll be very heavy on the scale on the day of judgment. But the problem is, do we remember to say this? So what you do, you anchor yourself to something that you do on a daily basis so that you don't have to think about it, you automatically say it. So let's say every time you get into the car to drive, make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the beginning. Or every time you open the door before you go inside, say bismillah and then say some form of dhikr, some form of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make it a habit, attach it to something that you do in the day so it becomes automatic. And the dhikr is really how we can make the most of our time and how we can make the most of the days that we have remaining. So those five things, seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the other ones, charity, the salah, the Quran, and the dhikr. A place in hell and a place in paradise. So when we die and we get asked these questions in the grave, who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who was this person who came to you? If we answer them correctly, Allah is my Lord, my religion is Islam, and this person who came was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. 
his grave will become wide and expand, and he will feel this joy of paradise, and he will be shown his seat in the hellfire. He will be shown his seat in the hellfire, and to Allah will tell him, this is what we saved you from. And likewise, the other person who does not answer the questions correctly, he does not know the answer because he ignored Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. He turned away from the reminders. He turned away from the blessings. Allah blesses us. Allah raised us. Allah gives us so many blessings that we ignore. In this life, when it comes to that time when we have to answer these questions, it will be difficult. For that person, the grave will constrict to such an extent that the ribs will interlock. It will be a very painful time and he will be shown his position in paradise and it will be said that this could have been your position. So these are the two scenarios. Now is the time we decide which scenario we want to be on. And the Prophet ﷺ made it easy for us. They said if you ask for Jannah three times, what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make Jannah speak and Jannah will petition on our behalf and say, Oh Allah, grant this person Jannah. And if you seek refuge from the hellfire three times, hellfire will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, keep this person away from me. How easy is that? To say it three times, Oh Allah, grant me Jannah. Oh Allah, grant me Jannah. Oh Allah, grant me Jannah. Oh Allah, I seek refuge from the hellfire. Oh Allah, I seek refuge from the hellfire. Oh Allah, I seek refuge from the hellfire. How easy is that? What excuse will we have for not following such easy advices, such simple things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Jannah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, one step you take towards Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes 10 steps towards you. You walk towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rushes towards you. This is the beauty of Allah. This is the mercy of Allah. Recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now whilst you have the chance so that we may have a fruitful hereafter. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the Quran that we have recited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us all in Jannah al Fardaus. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Brothers and sisters, we haven't got much time, so quickly, Islam Halifax, the people of Islam Halifax uh, today just wanting to present a little hadiya gift to Sheikh Yahya for this year's Ramadan recitation of Quran. The brothers and sisters have given this hadiya. What's inside it? Yeah, it's a beautiful pen inside this box. L due to the lack of time, I am going to open it up and show it to you guys. Present it, present it, you present it. Just tell him that it's from brothers. And بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إسلام هاليفاكس يريدون أن يقدم لشيخ يحيى لخدمته للعاد المكان وهذه هذه المدينة وهذه الأحل خمس سنين قراءة القرآن ويعلم الناس هنا الخير فهم يريدون أن يقدم هدية صغيرة بشكل قلم جميل ومناسب لهذا لأن أول خلق الله كان قلما وأول آية القرآن نزل اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق فهذا مناسب جدا لشيخ يحيى ونقدم من قلوبنا ونتمنى إن شاء الله كذا سنين إن شاء الله جايين يكون معنا بإذن الله فتفضل يا شيخنا بارك الله فيكم شكرهم وجزاهم الله خير إن شاء الله the plaque. The five years.
اشكرهم وجزاهم الله خيرا يعني على ما قدموه على حسن كرمهم وعلى حسن ضيافتهم اهل المكان كله. الشيخ يحيى از فيري فيري ثانكفول فور ذا بيبل سبيشلي بيبل اوف اسلام هاليفاكس فور بريزنتنج ذيس جيفت ويش مينز فيري فيري ماتش تو هيم جزاكم الله كل خير الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر Brothers and sisters, now we don't have much time in this day. Today, this day is passing by. So, inshallah, make your dua to Allah Azza wa Ask. We haven't got much moments left. Ask Allah Azza wa for Jannah al Firdaus. Ask Allah for His watch that we be from the people. You know, them small number of people that are going to be in Jannah, looking at the watch of Allah Azza wa Jal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض وضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريحان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان خلق الإنسان من صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجان من مارج من نار فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يخرج منهما اللؤلؤ والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وله الجوار المنشآت في البحر كالأعلام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان كل من عليها فان كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يسأله من في السماوات والأرض كل يوم هو في شأن فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان سنفرغ لكم أيها الثقلان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يا معشر الجن والإنس إن استطعتم أن تنفذوا من أقطار السماوات والأرض فانفذوا لا تنفذون إلا بسلطان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يرسل عليكما شواظ من نار ونحاس فلا تنتصران فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فإذا شقت السماء فكانت وردة كالدهان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان